Hi folks, Harry Frank from Ride Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to guide you through what is new in Trap Code Form 4.1. Most of what you'll find that is new in this release is related to the idea of using text layers or masks in conjunction with Trap Code Form. You can use text layers to render particles along the edges or the faces of the text, as well as using mask layers to fill or render along the splines of the mask. And I'll show you examples of both of these as we move forward. So I'd like to start with using text. So I'm going to jump to a new composition with the default settings and form. There's two different approaches I can take here. I can go into the designer window and load a preset and use that as a starting point. I'll go into my multiple form presets under the new text section and load one of the presets here. You'll see that it's using a placeholder piece of text to render the particles. This is because I haven't assigned a text layer, nor have I even created a text layer. So it will continue to show this both in the designer as well as in the After Effects composition until I define that text layer. So I'll go up to my text tool and create a piece of text. And I'll also move the text below the particles just because it looks better that way. So I'll go to the form controls under the base form, text and mask settings. And in here, I'll find a parameter for the layer and I'll define that to be the text. It snaps right to the text. And for it to do this, I want to point out all the things that are going on. First, form is actually following the transformations of the text layer itself in terms of its position, scale, and rotation, even if it is a 3D layer. So if I set this to 3D and I start rotating this in different axes, you'll see that the particles are following along using the transformations of your source text layer. Also, you notice in the base form section that the size X and Y are actually grayed out. Normally with other base forms, we manually define the size X, Y, and Z. In the text settings, there is a checkbox to match the text size. Even though we have the position scale and rotation lined up, we still need to match the exact height and width of the text. And this can get kind of tricky because we can do things like adjust the overall tracking or individual kerning between the letters. And this affects the overall width and height of your text. So with this checked, this will dynamically follow the height and width of your text. Now, earlier on, I mentioned there were two different approaches to using text in trap code form, and I wanted to back up and talk about the other one. So the first way was loading a preset and then assigning your text from there. When you load a preset, there are a number of things set for you automatically. So I wanted to review setting this up manually so you know all the things that you need to look out for. So just to review, we go to the base form section and set the base form to a text slash mask setting. In the text mask settings, we'll define the layer to use with trap code form. We'll most likely want to check the match text checkbox to match the X and Y size of form to the height and width of your text layer. Now, just like other base forms, such as box grid or box strings, this defaults to three particles in Z, which is why we see three groups of particles distributed in Z space. If I want just one, I can go to particles in Z and set that to one. Now I have separate control over particles rendering along the face and the edge. If I go in and set this to, let's say 10%, we'll see particles sparsely rendered along the face of the text and densely rendered along the edges. Below the density controls, we have this layer RGB usage, which allows us to take the source layer and assign it to a couple different particle parameters. One is to simply take the RGB values of the source layer and assign it to the particle color. Note that when we do that, our particle color controls are grayed out. If I set this back to none, we'll be able to manually set our particle color. The other options here allow us to assign variations in lightness to control things like particle size or particle rotation, which I'm not going to be doing in this example. The remaining controls down here relate to controlling the path start and end. So I can have the path start and end in different points on the text, and I can also offset it manually like this. By default, it's set to loop, but I can also set it to once so that once this offset goes over 100%, the particles disappear. The option up here, stroke edges sequentially, simply allows us to either 
have the stroke applied to each individual letter or all of the letters at the same time. So if I set this path offset to zero and the path end to 50%, we'll see that it is zero to 50% on each individual letter. If I check this box, this path start and end will go from zero to 50% on the entire group of characters. There's one last thing I wanna talk about with text and using form. And that is if you are specifically using more than one system, there's a little time saver that's in there that I wanna make sure that you know about. So let's say I add a number of different forms. So let's say I have four different forms here and I set these all to text and mask. In fact, I'll do a quick way of setting this. I'll just copy and paste and paste so that these are all just set to text and mask. Now you notice that just because I set them to text and mask doesn't mean it's actually following the same settings as the master form. We've defined unique base form settings for each system. And sometimes you're gonna to wanna to do that. Sometimes you want different density settings or different position offsets. So to save you some time in terms of defining that text layer, there is a checkbox on any system that is not the master system, which is to use the master layer. This allows you to have all of the additional systems use the same text layer as the master layer. I'm also going to check match text size while I'm here. So if I have four different systems, I can simply check these boxes. And if I have some variations on what these layers do, all of my systems will still be following this one text layer. I don't have to define it for each individual system. Okay, so let's move on to using form with masks. It's a very similar process. The one thing you want to make sure to do is to draw a mask layer that is not on your form layer. It will not let you do that. So I have a dedicated layer right here. And if I go in and I draw a shape, let's say I use the star tool. If I go to form under my base form, I'll set this to text slash mask. And in the text and mask settings, I'll define the layer that contains the mask. Now, it's going to use all of the masks on that layer. So if you want to isolate a certain mask, just make sure that it's on its own layer. I'll click on the match text and mask size. And you'll see, just like with text, we can render on the faces as well as the edges. Now, in terms of doing motion graphics, this is actually a good opportunity to take advantage of these particles in Z. In fact, I'm going to take the density faces all the way to zero and set the density edges to a very low number. Let's start with 5%. So we kind of have these scattered particles along the edge, but I'm gonna turn the particles in Z up to a really high number, let's say 600, and I set the size to 1000. Now I can get pretty creative with this because I've got particles along Z space that I can assign different maps to. I can go to the fractal field and apply displacement to all the particles and control the fractal strength over Z space and set this curve to be a linear graph like that. And if I click on this button here to flip it, it will be less fractal field at the front in Z and maximum fractal field at the end. I can also go in and do a map over Z and set this color over right here. I can use a preset or I actually like hitting the randomize button and seeing what kind of interesting things I can come up with. So it's really fun to work with. One very last feature I'd like to mention is not directly related to text and masks at all, but I'm going to use one of the presets to demonstrate this. Up until now, when you use shadowlets on your particles, and shadowlets are essentially smart drop shadows that exist in 3D space, the shadowlets always rendered as a spherical shape behind the particle, which works out if you're using a spherical particle. But if you're using something like a custom particle, like in this case, we have these leaves, but you can see that the shadowlet that they're casting is actually just a spherical shape. And this kind of breaks the illusion of what we're trying to do. So in the shadowlet settings, we have this match particle shape. And if I check this, it's going to take on the shape 
of the source particle, resulting in a much more realistic look. So that is what is new in Trap Code Form version 4.1. My name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next tutorial.